This is Pastor Joseph, and I want to give you a little extra. You see, I've been talking about worship, and a church that worships God is a church where they can see lives changed because the Bible says that He inhabits or He dwells in the praises of His people. And so when a church worships, they are rightly declaring that God is on the throne of this church and that He's here to minister, to serve, to love on, and to build up His people. There's always a good reason to worship. First of all, we worship God because who He is. He's God Almighty. He's God and He's worthy of our praise. The next reason is we always can worship God because of our salvation. Habakkuk tells us, although there's no fruit on the vine, or there's no money in the bank, or there's no animals in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the God of our salvation. I will praise Him because I'm eternally saved. My soul is going to rest knowing that it's going to be in heaven with Jesus. And so we always have something to praise God for. In Acts chapter 16, it talks about how Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into the inner prison. And at midnight hour, the Bible says, Paul and Silas praised God. And you know, it's in our darkest moments, in their darkest circumstances, that our praise is so sweet to Jesus. It's in those dark dungeons that we find out who we really are, what we're really made out of. And when we can worship God in our dungeon, it brings out the sweetest praise and it brings out the glorious power of our God. And so I want to encourage you, if you're going through a dark time, praise God in your midnight hour. It's the sweetest moments. When you look back at your walk with God, it won't be the high moments, the pinnacles of your success or the pinnacle of everything going right in your life, but it's in those dark days, those midnight hour moments you, where you experience the glory, the touch, and the sweetness of our God seeing you through. I also want to talk about some of our things in our life that rob us of our worship. Being comfortable can rob us of our worship. You see, when it, we are at our darkest moments, we all have only one thing, and that is the rock Christ Jesus holding us up. But it's our moments where we are comfortable, we are satisfied, where everything is going well, there's money in the bank, the cars are running well, we paid off some bills and we, we just were able to pay another month of our mortgage. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, the church of Laodicea, they were comfortable. They were rich. They thought they were in need of nothing. And that comfort robbed them of their passion and their worship for Almighty God. Because in their eyes, everything was fine. They were giving each other pats on the back. But God says, you don't even realize that you're naked, that you're undone that you're lukewarm. You've lost your passion for me. When we seek and when we attain comfort, if we're not careful, we'll make an idol out of that, where we are patting ourselves on the back, where we are worshiping ourselves and we are saying, look what I've done. I've built such a great life for my family. I am doing such a great job taking care of all my responsibilities. And when with that attitude, when we come to the house of the Lord, we have no room to worship God because we've been too busy worshiping and thanking ourselves for how awesome we are. It sounds so twisted, but if we're not careful, we can fall into that trap. You see, good things can turn into God things when we elevate it more than God. Comfort and achievement turn into idols when we are grateful for how good we are instead of celebrating if only by the grace of God here am I standing. Let me give you a few reasons why we should worship God. Number one, worship reminds us that God is in control. We realize how great God is when we worship Him. The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. We are getting our focus on God. We are reminded that God is God and we are not. The next thing is worship changes our perspective. Worship changes our mindset from an earthly mindset to a heavenly mindset. We see things in our spirit of faith when we worship more than the spirit and circumstances of this world when we praise God. He changes our perspective. And the next thing worship does is worship speaks the truth of God over our lives. We are declaring the truth of God, that He's good, that He's worthy, 
that he's an on-time God, that he's so faithful. We're declaring truth over our lives when we worship. The next aspect of praise and worship is songs. Songs are a reflection of who we are. Our songs that we sing reveal what's in our heart and affect what's in our heart. You see, we have to ask ourselves, we have to put some spiritual guardrails on our lives and ask these inventory questions about who we are. Or the playlists on our musical devices, are they a reflection of the glory of God or are they a reflection of the glory of man? Are they praising God and all his greatness or are they trying to bring attention to man and all its corruption? Songs desensitize us from the words that are actually being spoken. The music sometimes overpowers the lyrics, but we have to pause and see what are we allowing to be spoken over our lives. Are you allowing things to be said about you in a song that you would never allow someone to say to you? Are you singing lyrics to a song that you would never speak to someone else? Songs are a prophetic declaration over your life. You see, music is a gateway to the heart and of your soul. And eventually what you put in, your life is going to start aligning itself with. That's why it's so important to make sure that what you listen to is glorifying God. I want to talk about the way we worship God. You see, it's important to understand that God's love language is for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. To worship God in the spirit means to worship God with all your heart. And to worship God in the truth is to obey the revealed word of God. It's his love language. We are here to love God. And so let's do that by worshiping and praising his name. Hey, listen, if you enjoyed today's little extra, I encourage you to check us out, lifefamilychurch.org, and listen to the full sermon about worship. Also, you can check us out on our YouTube channel, lifefamily.tx. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram for more church information. Hey, listen, I love you and I love our church. God bless.